Unfortunately, the pros and cons between these two brands was not as clear as I initially expected. I'm gonna be comparing these based on the seven key categories that I look for when picking a food for my dogs as a nutritionist. My bachelor's degree is in nutrition science, albeit for humans, but dogs and humans share over 80% DNA, so the similarities is undeniable. And before I talk about which brand is more affordable, note that I purchased these with my own money just so I could be as open and honest and unbiased as possible. I do have special links for you. I have seen a ton of articles that Farmer's Dog is much less expensive or much cheaper than Ollie. And while that technically may be true, there's more to the story than just the cost. What I did to keep it fair was I customized the pricing for an active, healthy, no allergy, 50 pound dog. And as you can see here for a beef and chicken plan, for farmer's dog, it would be estimated $51.66 a week versus Ollie, which would be $62 a week. And if you've watched me for any length of time, you know that the first thing I'm going to look at are the ingredients and the carb and protein percent. Now, before we talk about the carb percent, which is actually really eye-opening, let's talk about the ingredients. The first thing I noticed is that both brands have meat in their first ingredient. Interestingly though, if we continue to look down the ingredient panel for their beef formula, just so I'm comparing the same proteins, Ollie has three organ meats, liver, kidney and heart versus the farmer's dog beef formula or recipe only has one organ meat, which is liver. Then we go further down the ingredient panel and you'll see a variety of words next to numbers. And these are vitamin synthetic packs. Both brands use vitamin synthetics. But what I notice is that the farmer's dog has more synthetic vitamins added to their food than Ollie. So one could make an educated assumption that Ollie is trying to provide their nutrients from whole food ingredients as much as possible. They still use vitamin synthetics. Now, you may be thinking, okay, Rachel is leaning towards Ollie. That's probably her favorite, but don't jump to that conclusion yet because one pro of the farmer's dog that is really, really important to me is the carb and protein percent. Why? Because it is something in the pet industry that can be widely agreed upon that dogs do not need an excessive or very high level of carbohydrates in their diet. And that is where farmer's dog has a leg up compared to Ollie in that their carbohydrates, when I'm looking at their beef and their chicken, are lower and their protein is higher. Now, before I talk about one feature that Ollie has that the farmer's dog doesn't have, which I love, as well as sourcing and convenience differences, I wanna talk about transitioning because if you're watching this video, you're likely considering trying a new dog food. And one of the ways to make sure that your dog is successful with going to a new food is going through the proper transition. Now, of course, every dog is different. This is what works for my dogs, but what I have found to be highly successful is to transition my dogs from one food to any other food, it doesn't matter what the other food is, slowly and gradually over time, and always adding a supplement that helps with digestive upset even before I make the switch. And the one that I use, of course, if you follow me for any length of time, you know I'm obsessed, is gonna be Native Pet Pumpkin, Powder. This is a shelf stable, much easier than like a canned pumpkin to use. And this is one of the only purely organic pumpkin powders that has no fillers and only three ingredients. As you can see here, it's organic pumpkin, pumpkin seed, and apple. And this is a supplement that you probably heard of this, is used to help with loose stool or even constipation and just general GI upset. The cool thing is both brands actually give you a guide on exactly how to transition your dog from their current food to this new food. And their transition guidelines are pretty similar to mine. Essentially what you do is you start with your dog's current food that they're eating right now, and you remove a small portion of it, like a quarter of it, and then you replace it with the new food that you're gonna transition them to. You do that for a few days. If your dog has a really sensitive stomach, you might do that for a full week. Then you'll go to half and half, where half of the food is your dog's current food, and then the other half is the new food that you're transitioning to. And then you move to 25% of your dog's current food and 75% of the dog's new food that you're transitioning to, each stage lasting anywhere from three to 10 days, but 
using something like Native Pet and big shout out to Native Pet for sponsoring this part of the video. I have been a customer of these guys for years. I love the fact that they are a small company owned by two best friends. This is linked below, special links. Like this is an incredible product. A little bit goes a long way. And what I do is a few days, at least three to five days before I start making that transition, I start giving them a serving of this in their regular food. Then as I continue to go through the transition stages, whether that takes you three days, some people go quick, all the way up to two months. I add this in almost every single day. Pro tip, before any stressful situation, if I know I have a vet visit next week, I'm gonna start adding this to my dog's food a few days before because this will help settle the stomach. Now, let's compare these two brands on variety because I am a massive advocate on rotating my dog's proteins. One, to ensure that they don't start to potentially develop an allergy to one. If I only feed my dog chicken their entire life, there have been veterinarians that have said that that can lead to a protein intolerance. I'm not an expert in that field, but it's something that I just don't want to have to worry about. But even more than that, I'm a big advocate of protein variety. I get that question a lot because I want to ensure that my dogs are getting the macro and micronutrients that they need. And one of the best ways that I do that for my dogs is giving them a variety of proteins. And I don't want my dogs to have to eat the same thing all the time every day. Both brands have three core proteins that are the same, which is chicken, beef, and turkey. Where they differ is that the farmer's dog offers a pork recipe, whereas Ollie offers a lamb recipe recipe. I love this option for both of them because these are more novel proteins that are great for dogs with allergies. In addition to that, Ollie offers something that the farmer's dog does not that I'm actually really excited about. A baked kibble option. Now, this video is not a full deep dive review on their kibble. If you want specific details on this kibble, comment below and I will absolutely do another video, but I will give a quick summary on this because this is actually brilliant and really helpful to pet parents for a couple of reasons. First off, remember how earlier we said that Ollie was a little bit more expensive in terms of cost than Farmer's Dog? Well, Ollie offers an option where you can have them send you half of your dog's meals as the fresh food option and half of them as a kibble option, which makes it a lot more affordable. Which is really important to me to bring this to your attention because at the end of the day, we all wanna feed our dogs the best food possible, but we all also have a lot of responsibilities and everything today in the economy is so expensive that you may not have the budget to feed your dog a fully fresh diet. So I love the fact that Ollie is bringing attention to the fact that you can have a partial fresh food diet with some kibble. And in fact, you can feed their fresh food diet, their cooked diet with a different brand of kibble. And candidly, if it was me, I might pick a different kibble. Again, if you wanna know my favorite kibbles, um, click down below. They also sent this, what they call pup tainer. And this was part of the purchase, did not cost anything extra. Um, and you can actually put two of these containers in here. You can open it up, put it in here. You could probably feed your dog out of here or you can easily store it in here. At this point, you're probably thinking, okay, Ollie's probably Rachel's favorite. It's probably the one she recommends, but you might be wrong because the cool thing about the farmer's dog, one, the cost in general is lower so that can help make it more affordable and you can always buy a different kibble brand. In addition, the Farmer's Dog offers a DIY option where you can buy just their vitamin synthetic pack with all the vitamins and min minerals that they say your dog needs and then go to your local grocery store or farmer's market and buy your own meat and organs. You gently cook it or feed it raw and then add in the vitamin synthetic packs that you buy from them and that's really only about 30 bucks. I will say I have not looked into their vitamin synthetic pack deeply so I'm not saying whether or not it is good or not but it is kind of a cool option because it brings to light that you can do DIY and make food on your own. One thing I find and hear from a lot of pet parents uh, and we connect with millions every single month is that convenience is really important. We all wanna do the best for our pets, but we all also have a ton going on. So at the end of the day, you just want something that you can kind of 
open and serve. And that brings me to the packaging and how these are delivered. I will say, in my opinion, again, everybody is different, is I actually prefer Ollie's delivery. I like that it has these little smaller to store packages because I find that it sits in the freezer easily. It doesn't get lost. I can easily put it in this cool container. It's just a little bit easier to feed for me out of this versus farmer's dog. This isn't a big difference. I wouldn't let this be a deciding factor, but farmer's dog was a little bit tougher because for in this example, I would only feed half of this to Finn at a time. So I have to like cut here and it is soft once it defrosts in the fridge. So I'd have to cut here and then put the remainder of this in the container that they sent, which is cool. So Farmer's Dog sent this reusable bag, which I think is pretty cool. I think every person gets it with their order. And then they sent this like to go, uh, not reusable uh, Tupperware type thing with a guide on how to get started. So you could take half this recipe, cut it, and then put the ha other half in here and then close it. I even went a little deeper in terms of convenience because I wanted to see how easy it was to cancel subscription because I ordered, I just wanted a one-time order for this specific video because I already have a bunch of other food in the freezer. And I did find that Farmer's Dog was much easier to cancel and manage the subscription for me, in my opinion, because you could do it right online versus Ollie, I had to email the service. Now, they emailed me back the same day saying, no problem, we'll cancel your subscription. Just let us know when you want, want to reactivate. I didn't love that I had to send an email. I liked with the Farmer's Dog, I could just automatically click cancel, manage, pause, whatever I wanted at a click of a button. And you know, I checked into the sourcing and both brands seem to be very similar in this. So I give them both kind of an equal score, uh, human grade, which is really, really important. And it's actually, their kibble is also human grade, which is not super common in kibble for Ollie. So keep that in mind if you're looking for kibble, because if it's not human grade, the alternative is a food that's made potentially with 4D rendered, diseased meat. It's really, really low quality and not supporting ethical practices. And for Ollie, for example, kind of looking at their guide that comes with it, it says right on here that our paper, including this guide, is made with FSC certified materials printed using primarily soy-based ink. And if you look inside of the farmer's dog box right here, it actually says, uh, the insulation is biodegradable. Remove the cornstarch foam from the recyclable liner and run it under warm water to melt like your heart when snuggling puppies. So that is really fun for me. They're both arrived in similar sized boxes and in the same length of time. It was just within a few days of placing the order. I know your next question is, Rachel, which of the two is your favorite? But I wanna remind you, you are the one feeding your dog, not me. So I want you to comment below and tell me which would you pick and why? And if you are looking to do a mixed diet where you're gonna feed half kibble and half one of these fresh foods, comment the kibble below you want me to review and don't forget to click that subscribe button and notification bell so that you don't miss when I do my next review. Now, if you wanna see more about what I look for in kibble, click the video right here. And if you wanna see more dog food reviews, click the video right there. And I hope you have a beautiful day, goodbye.